Friday, 6th of October, 1795. From Authentic Narratives. Scarborough. On Friday, the 6th of October, at the dawn of the morning, a vessel in great distress was discovered at an anchor near Filey Bridge, which is a formidable ridge of rocks to the south of this port, extending from the shore into the ocean. A severe gale had prevailed upon the craft for some days previous to this incident. The sea was tremendously agitated and the wind continued to blow with violence, which seemed to exclude every possibility of assistance from the shore, and excited the greatest anxiety for the safety of the vessel and mariners. In this moment of extreme danger, four fishermen belonging to this town, of great bodily strength and daring spirits, had the courage to adventure to their assistance in a little open fishing boat called a cobble, and braving all the dangers of the wind and sea, boldly committed themselves to the perils of the boisterous ocean. The distance from the harbour to the vessel was eight miles, but the extent of the traverse which the fishermen were obliged to make was ten miles, as they could not keep a straight course being under the necessity of preserving the boat in a proper direction to the sea. The water at the mouth of the harbour when they departed was extremely agitated, and the waves broke with uncommon fury at some distance from the shore. The moment was critical and perilous, and required an extraordinary degree of skill and intrepidity. Indeed it was esteemed a daring attempt of desperate men, prodigal of their lives and insensible to every idea of danger. The scene was highly interesting and alarming to see those intrepid men embarked in a little open boat in a high and dangerous sea, exerting all their strength and skill to combat its fury. Many and great were the perils they had to encounter. Their lives were exposed to a variety of accidents. At some moments they were suspended in the most awful situation on the summit of a mountainous wave, at others they totally disappeared from the view of the spectators. The boat from its construction required the greatest attention and dexterity in the management. A single unskilful movement might have proved fatal. They had their way to make through a boisterous sea to a great distance. Every nerve was to be strained and all their power exerted, and had they failed in their efforts to have reached the vessel, there was no possibility of returning, or landing upon any part of the coast, which made their situation truly desperate. After contending four hours with the tempestuous element, with the greatest fortitude and perseverance, drenched with the waves which frequently broke upon them, fatigued and almost exhausted with incessant labour, greater dangers were still presented on their approach to the vessel. The sea was dashing against her sides and breaking upon the decks in a tremendous manner, and she was rolling at the same time with the most violent motions. In such a critical situation, every attempt to board her seemed impracticable. But these intrepid men, inured to all the perils of the ocean, cool and collected in the midst of surrounding dangers, waited a momentary suspension of the agitation of the waves and instantly pushed to the vessel, leaping on board in succession, at proper intervals, the most undaunted resolution and activity, the boat being at the same time in the greatest danger either of sinking or dashing to pieces. After having thus providentially got on board, they found the ship in a hazardous situation. The crew were fatigued and dejected, the anchor was cast upon a rocky shore, and the cable every moment in danger of being cut by the asperities. The sea was high, the wind was blowing from a dangerous quarter, the formidable rocks of Filey surrounded with foaming waves threatening to leeward, and inevitable death with all its terrific horrors around them if the cable separated. The time of the tide was also critical, not a moment was to be lost, decision and judgment being essentially necessary with a comprehensive presence of mind and skilful foresight attained by a long experience, they saw at a glance all that was required. Temporary masts were immediately erected, and some small sails expeditiously fitted. A spring rope was fixed upon the cable to cast the head of the vessel the right way to the sea. The little sails were hoisted and trimmed to the wind, 
and the cable was cut at the proper moment. By these and other skilful manoeuvres the vessel and crew were extricated from the most imminent danger, and by extraordinary management and exertions safely conducted into this port at five o'clock in the evening of the same day amidst the applauses of numerous spectators. The Royal Humane Society sent a reward of ten guineas for their meritorious conduct, and the strangers who were at the spa and the spectators of the scene raised a handsome subscription on the occasion. The names of the fishermen who displayed so much skill and intrepidity are Matthew Hodgson, William Henderson, John Howard and Robert Reed. Hodgson has been three separate times overturned in his boat on similar occasions, three of his former companions have in those cases been drowned, but he has been preserved in the most providential manner. The following quotation from Pope's translation of the Iliad is applicable upon this occasion. White are the decks with foam, the winds are loud, How low the masts and sing through every shroud. Pale trembling, tired the sailors freeze with fears, And instant death on every wave appears. The fishermen are, in general, a very bold, hardy, robust race of men. Their lives are exposed to the greatest danger in their little boats in the storms of winter, And they sometimes adventure to the assistance of ships in distress, in such high and boisterous seas as one might suppose would make the stoutest heart to tremble. Happy would it be if the many providential deliverances they experience made a due impression upon them. These men see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep in the highest degree. Oh that they would, therefore, praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men that they would go into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praises be thankful unto him and speak good of his name Scarborough while jarring interests wake the world to arms and fright the peaceful vale with dire alarms while ocean hears vindictive thunders roll along his trembling waves from pole to pole sick of the scene where war with ruthless hand spreads desolation o'er the bleeding land Sick of the tumult where the trumpet's breath Bids ruin smile and drowns the groans of death. And tis mine retired beneath this cavern hoar That stands so lonely on this sea-beat shore To write the moving scenes of sad distress And all the dangers of the deep express. Here hostile elements tumultuous rise And lawless floods rebel against the skies Till hope expires and peril and dismay Wave their black ensigns on the watery way. Approach ye, brave companions of the sea, And fearless view this awful scene with me. Ye native guardians of your country's laws, Ye bold asserters of her sacred cause, The muse invites you, judge if I depart, Unequal from the precepts of your art. The violent gale of wind which suddenly arose on Saturday night, Last, proved fatal to many a hapless vessel and unfortunate mariner, and the severities of its effects were deeply experienced at this place. The evening until ten o'clock was serene and pleasant, the sky unclouded. Not a single prognostic of a storm was visible in the heavens. The wind seemed hushed to rest, and the sea was uncommonly smooth and placid. The scene changed in a moment. The clouds suddenly gathered darkness, the storm, loud as thunder, came sweeping from the north with irresistible violence and the awful hour of the night added to the tremendous gloom, and increased the general consternation. 